so with most projects, I'm always hesitant to say all, with most projects, it normally yeah. starts with, with a pre-sale. So a client would go to market to with a set of requirements. There's normally a set of requirements that they normally lift from their existing system. So um, they will approach vendors with their requirements and look at new possible systems. There was normally a bidding process or uh, from sales side an investigation at a high level to see is is our system fit for purpose for this client? Um, and then if everything was followed through, by the time it, it reaches co the consulting side, the project would normally have been agreed. There would have been a scope agreed. So by the time the implementation consultants get on board is the project is normally, well, it's a project kickoff. Yes. So we would then be introduced to the client, understanding who the stakeholders are, what the scope is, what they're trying to achieve um, okay. with a project timeline. And then we as consultants then go into the discovery or analysis phase. We will then have workshops with the different areas. And again, this is a very generic explanation. So it would depend on the the, the different modules within, within the HR application that they're yeah, interested course. in, um, the different processes. So but at a very generic level, yes, you would have discovery workshops mm -hmm. for every stream or area within the, the HR space that they are interested in, in looking at implementing your technology. Um, during those workshops, you, like I said, would introduce the new product, the capabilities, but then go into the deeper level of discovery of their processes, um, how they work what they're trying to achieve, what their policies are, um, mm -hmm. what their different contracts are. And just think like leave and absence, you would discover the different leave plans they have and how many countries they operate. So there's, that could be a one day workshop. It could be a week's discovery, depending yeah. on the, the, the size and, and intricacy of, of the various clients. Okay. You normally translate then those discoveries or requirements into what we call a solution design. So we will then take that away as a consultant and apply those requirements to the system and give the client back a, a document explaining how we will meet your requirements through our, our technology or our, our software. Okay. That then gets approved by the client. And then we start configuring the system based on those solution documents. Okay. Then after you've configured the system, there's full vision has an approach in our projects to have a playback session. Mm -hmm. I would then demonstrate back to the client um, how we have met these requirements within the system. Um, also, it's at a high level, it's almost, uh, we, we call them show and tells. So yeah. how would you actually use the system now to do or, or do the or execute the processes that, that you have given me or that you want want the system to do at yes. a high level? The client will then go into a testing phase. So there's normally user acceptance testing where the client will then test the system to see does it actually do what they want, want it to do? Does it meet the requirements? Are there any gaps that they might not have told us that this is a process that they need or that we might have missed even through the solution design document. Yeah. It might have been miscommunication or misinterpretation of a specific rule or a specific policy. So that is normally hashed out during the user acceptance testing phase. There could be a single cycle of user acceptance testing. There could be multiple, again, depending on the size of the project. But at the end of the user acceptance, you normally have then during user acceptance, you also resolve these issues. So if something comes up where configuration was missed or something should be changed, you fix that during the UAT and have the client retested to validate it. So normally as part of your UAT exit criteria, you have a list of tick boxes to say, yes, it meets. Yes, it meets. So you have a go, no go stage gate after UAT to say, yes, we accept the system. It meets our requirements. 
then you will go into a, a go live preparation or go live readiness. Mm -hmm. You then look at how do you um, get your legacy system data into your production system ready to transition and start using the new system um, as as your new solution. Yeah. And having said that, so there's a, a la layer of functional consulting that is normally the discovery, the configuration and assistance during testing. But again, there's multiple added layers to this project. Like I said, there's environment, so there's environment management. There could be solution architects where you have multiple systems maybe integrating. For example, I mentioned the yeah. payroll. So if there's a payroll integration, you would have solution architects also on the project where they need to ensure that the systems communicate with each other properly. So all of that forms part of the bigger project lifecycle. Of course.